the civil rights pilgrimage. And you're right, Dennis Simon was instrumental in that. The Perkins School of Theology was also instrumental in that. Um, it happened is they're going to head out on March 17th, shortly after the anniversary of Dr. King's speech. They go to different stops throughout the South. The students um, that go on this pilgrimage say it is transformative. And, and I've, I haven't had the chance to go myself. I would love to. I have colleagues that have gone, and they feel the same way. So um, we're lucky this year. Kelvin Beecham, who is our alum and an NFL football player, has provided some scholarships for the pilgrimage, which is um, great and exciting that more students get to have the opportunity to experience that. But they'll be gone all of spring break visiting different sites, walking the bridge at Selma. And so I think that is going to be a great learning experience for them. I, I can say, well, two weeks ago, we had Fred Gray on with us, who was the attorney for Rosa Parks for Martin Luther King. And we, we got to talk to him. And first off, you don't have that kind of living history hear much that you can even celebrate. So we were, you know, just honored to have him. But two um, two years ago on spring break, I had an opportunity to do that, basically that same pilgrimage. And my, my kids and I went to Little Rock to see Central High School and the National um, Park there. We went to Memphis to see the National Civil Rights Museum, which is which has been built inside the Lorraine Hotel, uh, which was amazing. And then we, we went to Alabama and went to Birmingham and saw the 16th Street Church. We went to the Civil Rights Institute. We went to Montgomery and then go to Selman, as you mentioned. And so I can I can already see what your students are about to witness. And, and I would encourage anyone to, to take that kind of pilgrimage and, and even your students, if, if I could come on and even encourage more students to go, because it is uh, it is life changing. So I, I'm excited for your students. Thank you very much. Yes, I actually have been to the Lorraine Motel, so oh. I know what you're talking about. Very cool stuff. Well, speaking of students, uh, you all just uh, came on board on another initiative that uh, just started here in town, the Dallas County Promise Initiative. Um, can you tell us a little bit about SMU's role in the Dallas County Promise? Well, um, we are, uh, as a number of other universities are, providing some scholarship support for Dallas County Promise and recently hosted some students that are in the program. They came to campus for a full day experience. And I'm really interested in when young people come to the campus, whether they're high schoolers or middle schoolers, that they have the opportunity to think about what it might be like for them to come to a college campus, whether that's SMU or another campus. Um, So they had a great experience. They were here all day. They got to hear from a millionaire business owner who graduated out of the Cox School uh, as an MBA, and they got to have a tour of campus. They got to see a women's basketball game um, to really cement in their mind what it's like to be on a college campus. And when you do those kinds of things, you know, oh, well, I can do this too. This this would be good for me as well. This is Deconstructing Dallas. We are talking to Suzanne Massey, Director of Community Relations. And when we come back, we're going to chat a little bit about the literacy initiatives that you've been working on, because I know that is a big focus of your work. So we will take a quick break and come back. This is Deconstructing Dallas. Today, Sean, we are here with SMU's Director of Community Relations, Suzanne Massey. And Suzanne, we'd be remiss if we didn't give you the opportunity to tell us your Twitter handle or any other social media feeds that you'd like to share. Sure. Um, always feel welcome to follow me at, at Community SMU. And also the main SMU account is at SMU. Also uh, join us on Facebook, SMU on Facebook, and you can find out about a lot of different exciting things that are happening all across the campus all the time. 
follow this lady. Take I, it, I take it love me. following SMU community. I mean, that is one of my favorite feeds, and I'm not saying that because she's a client and a friend. It's because I like it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, Suzanne, before the break, we were uh, talking about some of your uh, important literacy initiatives that, that SMU has taken on here in the city of Dallas. Can you tell us a little bit about, uh, first, the Mayor's Summer Reading Program and then uh, your SMU Reads Program? I've been so excited to be a part of the Mayor's Summer Reading Program because I think it um, is it, it hits on so many levels. First of all, uh, being at a university, we have to have people who are able, who have a good foundation for reading. That's pretty much all that the students do. Um, so that's one thing that we want to spend a lot of time and effort on uh, as far as communicating what's important at the university level. But also the Mayor Summer Reading Program is all over the city. So there are 32 and soon to be 33 branches across the city. That means that when we participate, we are going to get to uh, interact with and be connected to young people and even adults are a part of the program all across the city. And that is really valuable from my perspective. What we've been able to do is to help support this idea of literacy. When children get into this summer slump and they're not reading, then we help support literacy throughout the summer uh, so they can come back to school and be on level with where they need to be. Um, And we give out prizes. The kids get weekly prizes. So they get some great prizes from us, whether it's a free visit to our Meadows Museum, which hosts uh, Spanish art, possibly free tickets to a soccer game, um, We've done fun experiences with some of our great professors and coaches. Um, Some people have got to visit Coach Mays, who's our women's basketball coach. We've had other people who've got to spend time with Dr. Jacobs, who is a renowned paleontologist. And so those are just some some great things that we've been able to do to support literacy. What about um, SMU Reads? I know last year, Matthew Desmond, uh, his book Evicted was the book that that you, and, and I can let you tell about who reads it and why. Uh, but can, can you talk about um, SMU Reads and, and also how we can make sure that this year we can can read the book? while the students are reading it. (laughs) Yes. So last year, as you mentioned, we had uh, Matthew Desmond's book, Evicted. It was so timely because of the issues that we were, that the city was addressing about housing in West Dallas. Um, We had a great partnership with the Dallas Morning News where there was an online uh, book discussion about the book as well as a number of editorials. So really what SMU reads is, is that... um, Our incoming freshmen all read a book, the same book, together. And then through their classes, they have discussions or paperwork um, related to the reading. But typically, it's it's related to a very timely issue, topical issue happening in our community, though not always. Sometimes it's fiction. The the part that is important for me is that I would like the whole city of Dallas to be reading this book along with us. And so we have made a lot of effort to invite the community to come and be a part of this. We typically host the author every year to come and do a presentation. And so people like Matthew Desmond, we're hosting close to about a thousand people each year. And that's a mixture of students and uh, people from the community. And that's a great opportunity for people to come together and, and talk about these really critical issues that our community is facing. And when do you announce the book? Like, when will you know which book is going to be read in the next spring or next fall? And can we get an exclusive here at Deconstructed Give Dallas? Give us a spoiler because, here, Because we might need to start early. You know, it might take us a little longer to <laughs> read it. Right. So maybe if you could kind of tell us now, then we could get started. I do have some insider info. I won't kid you, but I can't give everything away. So what I can tell you is that the book is stem related. Okay. So we've got some science okay. issues that, that we're looking at in this book. So that's my little teaser for you. And as soon as I can tell you more, I will. Speaking of, of STEM and computer science, um, talk to us a little bit about the Guild Hall and their X Prize effort that's uh, that's coming up. So the Guild Hall is a graduate program here at SMU. It's 
been named the number one grad school for game design in the world by Princeton Review. That was in 2017, so we're pretty proud of that, I must say. But the Guildhall is really important in terms of developing gaming and um, their graduates get hired quite quickly. But one important thing that they have worked on with a number of different entities is for the X Prize, which, if you're not aware of it, is a a literacy prize that's done by the Barbara Bush Foundation. So Guildhall worked in conjunction with our Simmons School of Education and LIFT, which is Literacy Instruction for Texas. LIFT is an adult literacy uh, program. Worked together to develop this, uh, an app, to help adult literacy learners learn how to read. And so the team's name, they're called People for Words. They are actually one of eight semifinalists for the X Prize, um, which is a considerable award. And they are going to find out about the finalists in May of 2018. So we're eagerly awaiting that. The, the app itself is called um, The Lost Words of Atlantis. And um, in May of 2018, when the finalists are named, we'll have a launch of the city's competition. So this is actually a global competition, not just in Dallas, not just in the U.S. It's the hardest working lady in community relations, Suzanne Massey from Southern Methodist University, SMU. Suzanne, it's a pleasure to get the opportunity to work with you. And I'm personally so glad that you work your tail off for my alma mater SMU. So thank you for for being with us today. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm glad to know you guys and be a part of this. Make sure you follow Suzanne on Twitter. This is Deconstructing Dallas. We will be back to wrap up right after another quick break. Welcome back. This is Deconstructing Dallas, Ryan Trimble, Sean Williams, and what a great time we had today visiting with our friend, Suzanne Massey, SMU's Director of Community Relations. Every time we talk with Suzanne, work with Suzanne, you know, her energy, her enthusiasm, it is, it it just makes me want to. It's infectious, isn't it? Absolutely. It makes makes you want want to pony up, doesn't it, Pony up every day now. I I can't. But that's right. But I can't. I, I know you've got uh, this the problem with your thumb sticking up. Is that a gig- no? But I mean, gig-um thumb. You've seen me at the games. I mean, once <laughs> no, the games you're get in going, it. I, I'm in it. I have my pin that I wear. I mean, when you're out tailgating, <laughs> I, I, I swing through. I mean, it, it's yeah. exciting. Yeah. Well, you you have the right attitude, and that is cheering for the home team. So. From the bottom of my heart, from all our friends at the Mustang Club and SMU Athletics, thank you, Sean, Absolutely. for embracing your home team, Not a problem. the Mighty Mustangs. Love it. I wanted to say thank you as well to uh, SMU's Vice President of Development and External Affairs, as well as SMU's General Counsel, uh, Paul Ward, uh, VP Brad Cheeves, and Paul Ward. Uh, we get to work with them as well. Uh, they're, they're just outstanding friends and clients, and so thank you. Uh, thank you both, uh, in addition to Suzanne, for the opportunity to to work with such an outstanding institution, one that I have a lot of pride in, and um, uh, you know, just such an exciting time to be a Mustang, be in Dallas, and to see world changers shaped here. We are really starting to pick up steam. We missed a week, but since we've had an opportunity to, to get a little bit more consistent with posting our podcast, we are gaining listeners, so we appreciate it. But we need you, whoever you are listening today, to, number one, subscribe to us. If you're on Stitcher, if you are on iTunes, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you download the episodes and follow us on Twitter. I am at Sean P. Williams, S-H-A-W-N, and he is at... R Trimble 15. So follow us on Twitter. Shoot us an email if you got any questions. We are deconstructing Dallas at gmail.com. So for Ryan Trimble, this is Sean Williams again. Thanks to Suzanne Massey. Thanks to SMU. Check us out next week. Deconstructing Dallas. Adios.